Okay, so this is just going to be a follow-up video to this last one uh, where we went down to the Kern River Trail off the Johnson Dale Bridge and the Sierras. Uh, I actually meant to do this on the trail, uh, but we just, I, I forgot. But I, I had a couple people ask me actually, and I've been asked before, I just, I don't know why I never do it. But basically all it is is my loadout, uh, what I what I travel with um, under certain uh, conditions, you could say. Because, uh, I mean, obviously depending on where you're going, things change, you know, the time of year. But this is what I could say is a safe loadout for me for anything just 30, let's say 30 degrees or above. Uh, just because this is all more than enough for that. Any, any colder than that, um, you know, I'll probably need a bigger bag, which for that I have a different one. I have... Uh, a granite gear um, it's a 60 liter I believe or a 58 um, for this one what I have is the uh, the Osprey this is the Osprey Kestrel 38 um, this is more than enough uh, really for like I said most of the year so on this trip um, the main thing was that uh, you know, it was gonna get down pretty cold. Uh, it was supposed to be, uh, in, I think in the low 40s. I believe it got to like the mid 30s actually, and it was still enough. Um, and we were planning on doing some fishing. So uh, just starting with the bag, like I said, that's basically what I have here. Now, starting with the fishing itself, just because this is an extra that doesn't always go with me. Um, I used to carry a pen rod, um, you know, not like the penfishingrods.com one, but uh, you know, I had my own little jerry rig kit. Uh, what I like about this one is it's still not too heavy. This is, uh, what is this here? It's a Shakespeare reel that I actually found out in Lake Isabella in one of their uh, uh, fishing stores there. And the reason why I like it is it's one of those egg style reels, but it's not a push bottom on the bottom here. Um, it actually works more like a bait caster because the trigger is right here. You hold and then release and then it goes. It's really compact, uh, really lightweight. And uh, I actually just bought one of these uh, telescoping rods. It's kind of a cheapie, but you know, it's about a six foot rod. It doesn't weigh anything at all really, and it does the job. I mean, for light tackle, it's really good. Just a spool of extra line. I actually had a different one, but we ended up using it. So this is some six pound test just to be on the safe side. And in my uh, tackle kit, this is out of my main, um, my main uh, tackle box. I just picked out what's going to be best for the uh, for the trip in this case, which basically consists of all trout. I already put back a lot of the stuff that I had taken out of the tackle box into my main tackle box, but more or less what we're talking about here is uh, a couple of Panther Martins, uh, some plastic swim baits, a little bit of split shot. Um, some lighter little sinkers there. This is for uh, um, I forgot what. Oh, those are I forgot something holders. Uh, oh man, I forgot they are. But they basically they're for bottom feeder rigs. Um, Carolina Keeper. That's what it's called. Uh, little treble hooks, little J hooks, and that's basically about it. These lures are just just in case we ended up fishing the lake or something for bass but really just a bunch of trout stuff um, nothing major so that's pretty much it for the uh, for the fishing kit and like I said that doesn't always go that was just because this was a little more uh, geared towards fishing this particular trip now the main gear and I'll start with this just because I have it out this is my uh, I actually talked about it in the video but it's my REI Igneo um, it's a 19 degree sleeping bag. It's, uh, I believe it's like 800 fill down. Uh, really, really warm, really warm bag. I mean, I've, I've had this thing, you know, down to like the, the low teens and uh, this has definitely come through. If it gets any colder, you know, I have a, a liner, but this bag is like a pound and a half and it compresses down, I mean, super small. I mean, this thing, this is the, the compression sack that I use for it. It's uh, a small sea to summit. It's a sill nylon compression sack, and I can get it down to the size of like a cantaloupe uh, easily. Uh, and that's only because that's the limit of this compression sack. But that's a really great sack. Um, you know, the, the more compressible your bag, 
uh, the better it is, I think. Some people don't like to compress their bags, uh, but, you know, I, I keep it stored like this most of the time, and if I'm compressing it, it's for, you know, a night or two, at most three on a backpacking trip, so I'm not worried about that. Um, this is also out right now, and it's just because something, I don't know if anybody's noticed, you know, whether you follow me on Instagram or you've seen any of my videos, but it's a Shamak. I mean, a lot of people think it might be cheesy or anything like that, but this thing, and ask anybody that I've gone backpacking or hiking with, has a million and one uses. That's for sure, and this thing has come through for so many reasons, so many times. I just won't head out into the mountains or anywhere. I won't head out into the woods, out into the wilderness without one. That's a fact, because like I said, that thing is probably one of my most important pieces of gear. Uh, of course, I just have my sunglasses. Uh, usually I would have just carried a hat, but these are prescriptions, so they just really work out. Um, these two, these are just always in my pocket. Now, I collect knives uh, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, folders and this and this and that, you know, whatever, but I just prefer because I usually have a primary knife. This is not my primary knife. Um, this will just be like a backup. I prefer to keep something that I know will perform, but it's not the most expensive thing in the world. And in this case, this one is a newer one that I have. It's a Kershaw. Um, it's only like 60 bucks or something like that, but uh, it's 8CR 13 MOV steel. It's more than enough. It holds a really good edge. Any, you know, little camp chores or anything like that this will come through and this is my light I also carry it with me every single day uh, so this is a flashlight I mean it's super bright it's a Phoenix PD 35 you can get one of these they take 18650 batteries like the same you put in a vape or something um, super bright uh, they're like 80 bucks I think but I mean the thing is bomb proof I mean I've dropped this thing a million times down the side of a mountain you know I had to go get it dropped it in water it's waterproof great great flashlight and it fits right in your pocket that's why I carry it pretty much every day so these are the things that are normally in here now like I said this is compressed this goes in the backpack um, these just happen to be the boots that I wore on this last trip these are the uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, the Keen Targi 2's I know they just came out with the threes recently but these things are great um, I, I prefer these just because uh, you know out of all the boots that I have this these are some of the most aggressive lug patterns and um, basically out in the Sierras it's it's really rocky really rugged so uh, you know big lugs like this do really good when you're walking on sharp rocks uh, they don't come through the sole as much the shank is decently stiff so they're comfortable at the same time lightweight and they're waterproof I mean a lot of people say you know waterproof boots doesn't mean you can submerge them though but I mean I've submerged these things plenty walking through streams like up to my ankle and stayed dry the whole time so those are the boots that I use um, to the main pack uh, just starting with what we see here um, this is actually a, a Sea to Summit backpack uh, so this little thing here it folds out. It's a little sill nylon backpack. I just carry it because a lot of the times we set up base camp um, Basically, you know You're not always just gonna stay there the whole time like on this trip We ended up, you know marching off a couple miles after we were already set up at base camp looking for firewood You know just uh, exploring a little bit and you don't want to have to leave all your stuff out if you have things to carry um, you know, normally I'll take my, my water filtration system, uh, maybe a snack or whatever little things you want to carry with you, bug spray, you know, whatever it is. And, uh, this folds out to like a regular size backpack, like a book bag you would see in, you know, for school or something. So this is actually really good and it's gotta be like just a couple of ounces. So weighs nothing. Um, so that always comes with me for just in case, uh, in the top pouch. Uh, this is actually my water filtration kit. This is the old case to my uh, those those sunglasses, and um, if I could just open it with one hand here. Uh, basically, all it is, it consists of my Sawyer Mini. Uh, the Sawyer Mini, I choose just because it's it's lightweight. It's really small. It's not like the Sawyer Squeeze, which I know a lot of people for the Squeeze because of the better flow rate, but I don't have a problem with this flow rate and I like the fact that you know you can use the straw drink directly out of the source or you can connect it to a bag or you can even connect it to you know like a soda bottle or one of the, you know 
the average bottle that has that type of uh, mouthpiece. Now, this bag isn't the one that comes with it. This is like a like a gallon bag or something. I think it's like 64 ounces, something like that. But it's a big one. Good thing about that is, again, lightweight. Uh, I usually carry the 32 ounce Nalgene uh, bottles, and uh, you could you don't even have to fill this thing up all the way, and it's more than enough to fill up one of these. So, uh, you know, you can fill up multiple bottles real quick, and yeah, it's lightweight and it does its job. A lot of people don't like to carry the back flushing syringe. I do, uh, just because you know if you've been filtering silty water or whatever it is. Some people will say wait till you get home, but you know if that stuff starts to dry in there, you know it can clog it up a lot faster than you'd expect to. So that's just my preference, and it doesn't weigh you know much more than a couple of ounces. Um, so there's the filtration kit. Uh, this is uh, what we call trail gold. These are wet wipes, and I won't carry like a tremendous amount, but. Um, I mean, for the obvious reasons, you know, wipe your butt and go take a dump in the woods or, uh, you know, clean yourself up if you get dirty. Uh, I mean, they just have a million uses as well. So it's always nice to have these rather than just some, you know, toilet paper. Uh, the flushable ones are good just because they're a little more bio biodegradable. I'm not going to say I'm the perfect hiker and I'm going to pack out my own poop paper, but, you know, I'll bury it and whatever. But that's cool right there. And we'll leave it at that. Um... These, oh, these I didn't take with me. These I just put back because I spend most of my time here in San Gabriel Mountains. And this is a, not a very detailed one, but this is a map of the San Bernardinos. Um, so I just keep those on me because it's where I spend most of my time. When I even do get out, uh, so maps. And uh, first aid. This one, I'll just let you know, It's it's been like a kind of a debate with myself you know what I really should carry in um, in a first aid kit uh, just because like you know how much is too much how much is too little you know because if you're carrying a first aid kit you you obviously have it in case of an emergency and an emergency doesn't consist of a, a knee scrape or something like that you know for that yeah you know you have a little neosporin little band-aid whatever so Basically, it's uh, it's more towards disinfecting and cleaning whatever wound is that you have. So I have like you know antibacterial wipes. I have a lighter with needle and thread, uh, you know, in case you got to stitch something up. Or if you don't want to go that route, then that's you know, kind of a little more serious uh, wound. Uh, I also have crazy glue that could work really well to seal up a wound that maybe you don't want to stitch. It's not that bad. Uh, and again, neosporin disinfectant spray. Uh, if it's, you know, heavy trauma or like a really heavy, like laceration or whatever it is, you know, then you can go back to your shamak. You need something big to tie it off or as a compress or gauze, you know, just something to stop the bleeding. That's, that's a whole different story. You know, we hope that none of that ever happens. I just have some Q-tips just cause, well, one for hygiene, but also you could use them to clean, you know, an awkward wound or something, different size bandages, tweezers to pull out, uh, you know, splinters or anything like that, a couple safety pins. These things could serve a lot of different purposes. Um, this is actually, I don't know why it's in there, but uh, this is actually, a, I forgot, it's like a technical tape. It's uh, for patching uh, rip stops. So, you know, whether it's a hammock or your tent or a sleeping pad, this stuff is crazy strong and works really well. So, um, that's my first aid kit. Oh, yeah, and this is uh, cortisone. So, uh, bug bites. Um, you know, poison ivy, poison oak, that's all covered. And again, it's all in this little case here. So a lot of different possibilities, you know, and you can improvise if you absolutely have to, but that's all covered in first aid here. Now, again, we're still trying to keep it small. So this is just what I consider to be most important that it's not too much, but it, it's enough for most situations. Um, Let's see what else I have here. Oh, this is uh, toiletries, uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, um, like foot cream, a uh, mirror, floss, which also serves multiple purposes, uh, and a little deodorant, a little travel deodorant. Um, oh, this is, uh, this is a strop. This is a strop I made out of a, a piece of wood, and I, I glued on a, uh, a piece of belt. 
this is got stropping compound really fine stropping compound or honing compound um, that's for my knife so I do I am a firm believer in maintaining your knife it does serve a lot of purposes when you're out there uh, especially if you're trying to ca uh, carry as little stuff as possible your knife is a really versatile tool so taking care of it is really important I have a sharpening stone also in my kit which I'll show in a bit but uh, honing it is really important for me as well because uh, you know you want to keep it doing its job well and uh, a dangerous knife is a dull knife and that's how you can cause more injuries you know using a dull knife you know you're trying to cut through something it's not cutting you force it it slips you cut yourself you're in pain so uh, this is um, I guess it could go with the first aid but this is basically meds uh, nothing really crazy in here there's just um, some painkillers some stomach meds and uh, I think that's about it so I got like ibuprofen and aspirin um, actually I think I have a couple of Vicodin in there they're probably really old but I mean in case you know it's something you twist your ankle and you need to get out of there something to numb that pain and uh, Pepto-Bismol and Imodium for some serious stomach stomach troubles nobody likes that in the middle of the woods uh, it's just my titanium spork it's also Cedar Summit for the mountain houses um, Vaseline this little thing I know people would think that's weird but this also has a million and one uses whether it's for fire starting whether you're chafing whether it's a burn whatever it may be this this can I mean this can make all the difference in the world so Vaseline uh, if you never considered it you know there are definitely a lot of uses for this and uh, you know that I've proven that on trips where it's uh, you know countless times that you've used that and you wouldn't think you would have uh, this is uh, my black diamond headlamp this is the, I forget the model I don't think it's the spot I forgot but it's a really good one it's one of the brighter ones all the different modes and everything waterproof blah 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 it's a great light um, really good battery life on that and I think that's about it for the top pouch this is actually just an extra tip for one of the trekking poles uh, we'll get to that in a bit just because um, my tent that I use now it, when I go solo basically is um, it's a two-person tent but it's uh, a big Agnes it's not a freestanding it's called the Scout UL2 and you need trekking poles to do that and uh, a couple of them go inside and you know you don't want to put the bare tips into the bottom of your tent so if I ever needed to I just put this on there and that's that's enough that's just some extra so that's it for the top pouch um, for the inside like I said we already went over the fact that I got the sleeping bag out that normally would be in here and this again may not be in here for uh, the average summer trip but it is just like I said because in these months it can get pretty cold in the mountains this is just a down jacket uh, I don't remember which one this is I think it's the not the REI one oh this is just the Costco one that I had this is a, a Costco down jacket really compressible really light I have another one also that I use sometimes it's a um, uh, the REI co-op one but that's in there in case it gets too cold as far as food for this trip I actually didn't even touch my food um, but I just have one main meal this one's two servings and I'll usually just hold out until I'm really really hungry to do that uh, to eat that so this is the beef stroganoff with noodles my absolute favorite and um, Backpacker's Pantry. I took this. This is something I carry with me on most trips, no matter what I'm having to eat or anything like that, just because it's probably one of my favorites, the bacon cheddar mashed potatoes. This is good. The reason why I took this this time is because that was supposed to be my side with any fish that I caught, which were a total of zero, so I didn't get to use that, but that was going to be my side. This is just a beanie for when I'm in bed, if it gets too cold. Again, like I said, keeping in mind we're at close to freezing temperatures most times. This is my pillow. This is REI pillow. Actually, Kathy got this one for me, but this one just hands down has got to be my favorite. I mean, I've used other ones, the big bulky ones, inflatable ones. This material is so soft. It's actually stuffed. It's not just inflatable. It's stuffed with uh, some kind of memory foam. So you can actually blow this up. And you know get it up really big or I prefer it a little soft and just let the filling you know 
get its fluff back, but on top of not being overly bulky in the mummy style sleeping bag, this thing fits right under your neck. It's not popping your head out through under the hood. And I mean, it is so com comfortable and soft. And on the back, it's got these little, um, like, I guess you could say it's like rubber strips. Not really. It's kind of tacky where it um, will catch on your bag and it won't slide around. So it stays in place. This has got to be hands down my favorite one. Before, I used to use my Shamak and uh, just wrap up my uh, extra clothes in it. And that was my pillow. But that's just so much better. And it's got to be like less than half a pound. Um, this, I guess you could say, is electronics, but not really. This is a dry bag. This, I believe, is also a Sea to Summit. Uh, yes, it is. Sea to Summit dry bag. It's those light silk nylon ones. In here, I just have stuff that I absolutely can't get wet. So it's usually not a lot. I'll usually have my uh, power bank. But uh, in this case, all I have in here is just extra batteries. Those are the lithium ion ones for whether it's the 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 flashlight or even my vape. I do take that. Um, my fire kit, which I cut down a lot of weight on this as well. I used to have so much here just over prepping for, you know, whatever situation. But really the most important things, I got a lighter, the, the Strike Anywhere matches. And I know it seems like a little overkill, but redundancy in a fire kit is not a bad thing. I got a, a Swedish Fire Steel with Striker. And these are some Jumbo Q-tips. The really fat tip ones, and I've actually soaked uh, a couple of those in Vaseline, so that's a really good fire kit. This is not going to fail you. And uh, on the cigarette, I mean the uh, the cigarette lighter holder thing, it's like one of these Mento Men Mentos uh, containers. I actually wrapped a bunch of uh, duct tape on that, so some extra duct, duct tape there doesn't hurt. And the only other thing I have here is just this is going to be for the headlamp and a lantern if I carry it. Just extra batteries, triple and double A's. So those do come in handy, probably more than I need, but that's one of those things that I consider a luxury I don't leave. Um, should be almost done here. Cook kit. So this is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's a Tox. Um, this was actually given to me by uh, George, my friend George, outdoorsy guy. This is, uh, this is a fry pan, the lid folds out, really good, it's all titanium, super light. Uh, in this one, I've actually, okay, this is going to be the propane one. This is an ultralight little stove here, it's nothing crazy like an MSR, it's like one of those online ones, but it works just fine. Um, if I could pull it out of the bag here, I'll show you which one it is. Come on. Sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. Okay, so it's one of these. Folds out, screwed on. Um, this thing works great. Uh, there's that. Oops, that's the top of it. I'll put it back on right now. Uh, my fuel canister. And this one, again, some people might say it's probably a little overkill, but again, whether I'm cooking something or I caught something and I want to cook it, whatever it is, any situation, I take eggs, I want to, whatever it is. This is a folding spatula. I think it's like an MSR. Weighs nothing. Uh, spork. This is actually dish soap. So um, I just hate leaving greasy, greasy pots and pans. So I take a little tiny bit of dish soap uh, to cut all that grease out. I don't have to worry about that. This is actually olive oil. So I can use it to cook whatever it is that I got, whether I took it or I caught it. Um, salt and pepper. Two separate shakers in one. Got that one at REI. That's pretty cool. Uh, just some steel wool to clean my pots when they're done. And this is the stand for the uh, isopropane, butane, whatever that stuff is, this thing. So you can stand either the small one or the little one on there. And the bottom is a giant pot. So that folds out as well. That's basically my cook kit. So like I said, whether I take something to cook or I'm just boiling water for a mountain house or even if, uh, you know, hopefully I never have to do it, but uh, I have to catch something, kill something and eat it. I'm stuck out there. A little pepper mentality, but you know, that's all, that's all good on that. So move it out the way. I'll organize all this after again. I have fun doing it. Uh, 
think it's the last thing here. This is the footprint and stakes for my tent. The Scout Yule 2. So this is the footprint for the Scout Yule 2. Stakes, I don't weigh anything. And this is my tent. That's it. That's the one that you'll see in the video if you look in either the Little Jimmy video or the uh, this last one up in the Sierras. I think it's like a pound and a half, if that. And that's including the steak. So right now it's probably more just like a pound. This thing is super light and it's really roomy. It's a two-person shelter. So that's it for that. Yeah, and that's the main compartment. On the back here, uh, this is a three-quarter uh, length Z-Light SOL, the Thermarest. More than enough for me, I've actually used this in the snow. So anybody that says, oh, the R value, blah, 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 this is enough. Especially with this reflective, no, that's, that's been enough for me. Uh, anything below 30, I might consider, you know, taking my other pad, which I have, that is a, a Big Agnes um, inflatable pad. It's uh, insulated and everything. I forgot which model it is. And uh, But yeah, no, this is more than enough. And this is my saw. Uh, this is probably going to be a weird item for anybody that even carries a, a folding saw, but this is actually an Osh <laughs> folding saw. But the cool thing about this is compared to most, like the Baco Laplander or whatever, which is another you know popular camp saw, the this one is almost twice the length and it weighs about the same thing. It's uh, this wood is really light; it's like a balsa wood or something. It folds out and locks, and it's really aggressive teeth. So this thing really comes through on this trip. We processed a lot of firewood and this thing really came through. It was just chewing right through it. So I, I really like this thing. It's either this or I'll normally carry like a hatchet, but you know, this and a knife will do it. Uh, trekking poles, both of them. These are newer ones that I got, some Kelty ones, but uh, you need two of them for my shelter. So I mean, I carry them anyways, and that's one of the good things. Um, those get strapped on the back. Here, this pouch usually just carries random you know things that I might just need to add on but in this case it's just some of my favorite jerky I always have some of this every time I go out there I stock up at this one store that I go to it's called Riley's this stuff is amazing um, buy that in bulk uh, oh this is the power bank that I use this is like a 2100 milliamp hour power bank and you see it fits in my hand like that it's not very heavy at all um, I think last but not least it's going to be my the front of my pack here, which I think it's just my my bear spray. And this is a little Coughlin's uh, whistle, compass, thermometer, and it has a magnifying glass as well. So you can make fire with this. You can blow your little whistle if you're in an emergency. And it's actually a working compass. A lot of these little cheap button ones don't work. This one actually works well. So that's just something to have. Carabiner, carabiner. Um, ah, yes, this the hip pouches. Hip pouches, um, just some napkins, dry napkins for whatever you might need them for. Um, wipe your sweat or clean something off. Uh, this is a recent addition that I've been carrying just because I'm a fat boy. But uh, these little uh, Kool Aid packets, one of these little packets make 16 ounces of Kool-Aid and it's actually not watered down. It's actually really good. So my 32 ounce Nalgene, sometimes you know what, you want something a little more than water, you know, toss uh, two of them in there and you're good to go. Um, so I got a couple of those just to add on. This again is another one of those uh, containers that I have for multi-purpose stuff. Some more duct tape wrapped around it. And what do I have in here? This is, uh, let's see. Oh, oh, this is a little uh, fishing kit just a minimum just uh, some split shots some hooks and like a plastic swim bait that's just in case of emergency and some line uh, that's it for that pocket and the last one let me get this open here uh, uh, DEET for sure oh and I gotta I gotta re-up on that I got another new one in there so this stuff is also magical I'm sure you all know if you've used it but it's a hundred percent DEET this stuff is strong. Uh, this will keep all those bugs off of you. I mean, like, this stuff is really good. I've tried those other ones that are, you know, aren't deep. And they'll work a little bit, but not as good as that has. And this is just a little travel-sized um, 
It's not an oily uh, sunscreen. I think it's like 40, SPF 40 or something like that. It's enough. And, oh, this is my, my sharpening stone. So this is the, uh, what is it called again? Oh yeah, the Falneven uh, DC4. Also great stone. Oh, and I got a striker in there, like a little hacksaw striker. Uh, it's got the, the rough and then the, the fine stone. It's like ceramic on one side. That's for the knife maintenance. And that's pretty much it. It all goes in here. Um, I think when I weighed out the base weight before adding the water, I was at like 24 pounds. On this trip, the only thing I added on that's not here right now is I decided to carry a, a 12 pack worth of tall boys. <laughs> um, and uh, that was probably another few pounds. But yeah, base weight, it's like low 20s. I could drop down even more, as you can see, I got a lot of stuff that I could probably choose to leave out, but this is just what I like to carry, comfort stuff. Again, like I said, it changes from trip to trip. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, if anybody has any questions about that, obviously leave it in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them, uh, but that's me. And thanks for watching. Oh, and just uh, one thing that I forgot to throw in there, which is weird considering how much I have an obsession with them is my primary knife um, this has been my primary since I got it I have a bunch of other ones but just for what it is the size the way it feels the way it performs this this is my baby this is not even the most expensive one I think uh, it's like 50 bucks or something like that it's actually a Mora but it's it's the new one it's not the garberg it's not the full tang one this is actually the the cans bowl um the reason why i like this one is it is stainless as opposed to their usual uh high carbon steel i really much rather carry a stainless steel knife uh just because most places around here there's water and uh you know depending on the conditions it doesn't require as much maintenance as uh you know carbon steel plus this spine is crazy sharp um it's like a modified scandy i guess you would say scandy grind uh, where it's got the scandinavian all down the main cutting edge and it actually tapers out to what i would think is like a full flat grind but there is a secondary bevel on there but this thing is great it's super tacky in the hand it's not gonna you know slip out it's got like a two different materials one of them's rubbery the other one's like a harder plastic and um i think most people know how strong more knives are if you've ever used them and they're not very expensive which is another good thing but this one as opposed to the usual rat tail tang that comes to like about here on amora um it's a it's almost like a full tang so basically it's like a three quarter or more tang it goes down to like right here and it's a little bit thicker than the usual tang so really good slicer still really super strong um, I just I really like this thing and uh, basically what I've done is um, on the actual sheath here if I can get that back in oh that's really good retention on that sheath too that knife's not coming out uh, what I did is just kinda ghetto style just um, added onto the sheath with uh, some duct tape I put like a little uh, a nylon insert there and I folded it over and then taped it on for this this is a ferro rod it's like a half inch ferro rod that actually Kathy got me for my birthday I got two of them and this thing is great too so that put together with the uh, with the knife with that good spine I mean this knife is just it's great I love it so yeah I just thought I'd add there on there on the end and even talk about it when it's like my main my main fave but uh yeah more knife, huh? Who would have thought? So many other more expensive, bigger knives, but this thing is. <laughs> How many times can I say it? It's great. Uh, but yeah, again, thanks for watching.